Hey church, welcome to another virtual Wednesday night. I'm excited to offer you an interview with Pastor Dustin Butts here in just a moment that we conducted yesterday and I recorded. Uh, but first I want to open it up with a text of scripture that we reference in this conversation. It's Deuteronomy chapter 6, looking at verses 4 to 9. And what we're talking about is family worship. And it may not feel relevant to everyone, but I want to press on you that it is. I think we see in this text that it is. Even if you live alone, I think there are some principles that you can draw out of this conversation and uh, even going to offer you opportunities to uh, join with others in the church and family worship, if you so like. So hear God's word from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Oh, may God's word be all over our house, invested in our children and grandchildren, invested in our neighbors and their children. May we be a people proclaiming this good news that God has entered in to his creation and is redeeming a people for himself. Let's pray as we begin. Father, we love you and we are so grateful for the opportunity to study your word. We're grateful for others and their example and how we can learn from others. Um, Lord, thank you for Dustin and his ministry. Thank you for Jamie and her faithfulness as well. Lord, we pray that our hearts would be encouraged, uh, that we would be rightly challenged uh, to take even more seriously uh, the worship of you inside our homes in this peculiar season we find ourselves. Bless this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, welcome to this Wednesday evening edition of Byron Baptist Church. I am uh, blessed and excited for you to introduce Dustin Butts. He is the Associate Pastor of Equipping at Mount Vernon Baptist Church, where Rebecca and I most recently worshipped. And I've asked him to join us today um, just to talk a little bit about how this unique season gives us an opportunity to do a reset on our family worship and how we might be approaching family worship in each of our households. So Dustin, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, so glad to be here. And uh, just to get started, I'd love to hear about how your uh, lovely wife, Jamie, and you have gotten into family worship through the years, how your practices may have evolved, maybe some ups and downs. Could you tell mm -hmm. us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So Jamie and I have been married for 13 years. We've got four kiddos. Uh, the oldest is 10, then we've got an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a three-year-old. And uh, we both were introduced to family worship prior to marriage. Uh, so I was in a church for a season where uh, the pastor one Sunday preached a, a lengthy sermon uh, on family worship. It was the first time I'd ever really heard about it or thought about it. And, uh, and the thing that just stuck with me from that sermon was the, the truth that I, as the future leader of my home, was responsible to lead my family in the worship of the Lord. And so that really stuck with me. And then when we got married, uh, we both were committed to, to doing family worship. Um, and, and initially we weren't very good at consistency in terms of just doing it together with one another. But once our, our oldest was born, uh, Nate, we began to, uh, do just a, a basic kind of Bible story reading and, uh, prayer and a song before he went to bed every night. And that was really the start of family worship for us. And, uh, and we were blessed in that season to be in a church where a number of families uh, did regular family worship, and we were often invited into homes uh, for dinner and would stick around after, and they would invite us to be a part of their family worship. And so we got to see it modeled in a variety of different ways with a variety of ages of children, and that was a, a blessing as well. And so you know, for us over time between watching other people and, uh, and just experimenting on our own with our own kids, just trying to figure out what's going to be the, the, the best way to go about this. 
we've uh, we've gotten to the point now with the age range that we have that um, on a it's not an, an every night basis because of the church schedule. You know, Sunday nights we have church, Wednesday nights we have church, but most nights when we are at home together as a family, we are opening up God's word together. Uh, right now we're reading through the book of Joshua. Um, the kids have their Bibles, they read with us, um, and, and we read it out loud, taking turns reading for the kids that are able to read. And we walk through uh, Joshua and talk about it. They ask questions, I ask them questions. Um, we then take some time to pray at the end of that about the things that we've talked about. And, uh, and then uh, in the Lord's kindness, my wife is quite musically inclined, I am not a singer, uh, but Jamie plays the piano and sings. And so um, she leads us in singing uh, uh, usually one hymn. Uh, and then we put the kids to bed. And so that's just been the pattern for our family uh, for the last, really the last, goodness, I guess it's been Nate's 10. So really the last eight years or so, um, that's been the, the consistent pattern. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just part of creating this conversation is I'm assuming that a lot of people deal with some low level guilt for knowing they should be leading their family spiritually, leading their household, um, and, and just not doing as good a job as they want. So I'm, I'm optimistic that this is a good season to have a fresh start. I know for Rebecca and I, we were never terribly consistent until we got to Mount Vernon and as part of the church covenant at Mount Vernon that you will endeavor to lead your families in, in worship. And so uh, that's when we, we really got a lot more consistent about it because we were making such a commitment. Mm -hmm. Um, so how would you say this season with COVID-19 and everything that's going on, uh, uniquely enables us to get a fresh start on family worship? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is just time. Um, for most people, I know for our family, the thing that we don't have a lot of in a normal, you know, week is time. And now with everything canceled and, you know, no evening activities, really, all we have is time. And so given that, it's a wonderful opportunity to, to take and to, you know, as the scripture says, make the, make the best use of our time. And I think one of the ways that we can best improve the time that we have is by spending time opening God's word together as a family, reading, praying, um, even singing. Um, and that, that in and of itself, I think is the biggest blessing, um, of this season for families is now we have so much time together. Um, that certainly comes with its challenges. Uh, but at the same time, it, it is a, a real blessing to be able to, in a sense, hit reset, if you will, with our schedules and, uh, and with family worship, or even just to start, uh, afresh if you've never done it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to send this handout that you, you've kind of customized for, for us at Byron that, that you had sent to your church. Uh, but one of the things that's going to give there some examples of questions to ask of the text. Why is it important to ask questions of the text uh, in, in our family discussions? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is that it takes us deeper into God's word. Um, it's easy to read. I know we, all of us are guilty of this at times in our own devotional lives of reading God's word and hearing it, but not really hearing it. And especially for children, um, and especially if you're reading the, the, the Bible and not a children's Bible, there are going to be lots of words and phrases that they're not familiar with. And so asking questions, asking what they're understanding uh, is going to help you as a parent discern what is it that they're getting and not getting. Um, and then also it's just going to allow you to dig deeper into the, the passage and not merely skim the surface of it, but really grab hold of it and understand it and be able to apply it to your own life. How is family worship different than corporate worship or small group? So uh, a number of, of things come to mind, you know, corporate worship, when we gather together as a church, is an opportunity for us uh, to do what scripture commands, right? So you think of Colossians 3, we're to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to one another. That's commanded of us in scripture. And so 
that's a unique time. Uh, another passage I think of is, you know, Hebrews 10, 25, we're not to forsake the gathering of ourselves together. And so that is a, a clear command of scripture that we neglect to the detriment of our own souls and to the danger of our own souls. Uh, whereas, you know, family worship is not necessarily explicitly commanded in scripture. We're commanded to lead our families in the worship of the Lord. We're commanded in Deuteronomy 6, Psalm 78, to teach our children God's word. Uh, what that looks like can be different for different families. Uh, but I do think family worship is an opportunity to, to do exactly what God is calling us to do uh, in a unique way that also honestly prepares kids for sitting in corporate worship and, and hearing God's word preached. Um, if they're used to sitting in a living room, hearing it read and explained, they're going to be more prepared to sit in a pew and hear it read and explained uh, by a pastor. And so that's, that's one difference. The other difference, I think, is just the, the elements. You know, when we think of corporate worship, we're thinking of a lot of different elements. There's different kinds of prayers. There's scripture reading. There's, you know, the, the songs that we sing. And, uh, and when it comes to family worship, it really is something as simple as reading God's word, praying about what you've read, and just singing a song um, together in response uh, to what you've read. And so, so, so much simpler uh, in a lot of ways, but uh, in, in a lot of ways, they're similar. And also similar, you asked about small groups. I mean, it's similar to small groups in just that, you know, what you're doing often in a small group is, is opening up God's word and discussing it. And so you're doing that as a family. You're, you're going to say, you know, and you're doing it on a level, Lord willing, that your, your children are able to grasp and understand, um, recognizing that they may be believers, they may not be believers, and, uh, and so it's an opportunity to, to open up God's word, to pray for his spirit to work, and to, to hopefully see them engage uh, with God's word in, in a way that they might not uh, otherwise, especially, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not the same thing as a, a corporate worship gathering in the sense of, you know, a lot of smaller kids, they struggle to engage in the, the preaching, whereas you've got them on a couch and you're able to see what's going on in their little heads, ask them questions, and, uh, and engage with them in uh, ways that are particularly helpful and applicable to them. Thank you. Yeah, I think about when we first got to Mount Vernon, we, we thought you were a little bit crazy that my five-year-old had to stay in the worship service, uh, but within a matter of months, he, he was able to stay and, um, I mean, well, he was able to stay from the beginning, but able to, to behave and and take in a pretty good portion of it uh, within that matter of months so learned a lot there how would you say family worship is different from personal devotions I, mean, I think the biggest thing is that it's it's done in a in a group you know with your family and so you know family devotions are are like a in a sense a sharing, if you will, of your, of your quiet time. They, I think, honestly, for many, that's the easiest thing to do. You know, as you think about how do I do family worship? Well, take your quiet time and open up that same passage with your family and talk about what you read that morning. Um, I just think it's a, it's a, a great way to take your personal study and, and use it to engage your family and to teach your family God's word. And so, so they are, they are certainly different. Um, you know, the, the minute you add the word family um, in there, you've got, you've got something different going on. There's a different dynamic. You know, your personal devotions are, are private. They're you and the Lord. And, uh, and when, you, when you bring in your family, you're adding this dynamic where it's not merely me and the Lord um, and me and God's word, but me seeking to, to help someone else, help my family. Uh, understand God's word and and appreciate it. Um, so it is it is certainly not the same thing. Um, I don't think most of us sing um, during our private devotions, as maybe some of us do. Uh, but but that's one of the other things that we're able to do in a group that's really sweet as a family is to sing. Um, and if you're singing good songs, you're essentially singing God's word to one another. And that's something you just can't get. Uh, in private devotions. 
Uh, all right, so we've been talking a lot about the family here. Uh, what about for the single person? What does, what does this concept mean for the single person? Have you seen that done well? Yeah, yeah. So for singles, it's it is hard. You you really, if you're living by yourself, especially, um, it's difficult to to think about. Well, what am I supposed to do? I don't have a, a family. Um, I live by myself, and I I do think there's there's no no problem with a single just simply having personal devotions um, and doing that regularly and consistently. Um, I know uh, a lot of singles in our church, for many of them, that, that in and of itself is a struggle. Um, and so, you know, if you are single, I would encourage you there to start there. Uh, make sure that you're spending time in God's word uh, on your own, on a daily basis, digging in um, and, and seeking to understand it, not merely to, to read it, asking good questions. That's something you can do without a, a group of people is ask good questions of the text. So the, the guide that I sent to Bill has some questions in it that you can ask in your personal devotions um, to help you just mine the depths of God's word. Uh, but there are some ways that I've seen singles uh, particularly engage uh, in family worship uh, and it's primarily been through hospitality. So uh, we've got a, a, a single who has invited others into his home on a weekly basis. And what he does whenever he has people over for dinner is to say, after dinner, we're going to stop and take a little bit of time to read God's word together and to talk about it and to pray and to sing. And they do that um, after dinner, and it's been a, a, a sweet thing. We've got older members who have been to his house and just love the fact that they do family worship together. Um, so that's one way. Another, in this specifically kind of unique season that we're in right now where everyone's at home, uh, we've actually had singles invite themselves into the living rooms of church members virtually to be a part of family worship with them. And so that's another possibility to just call someone from church who you know does family worship and say, hey, one or two nights a week um, while this is going on, could I be a part of your, your family worship time? And uh, I think that's a, another way to, to engage. But uh, generally, you know, for, for the single, I would say if you've got roommates and they're believers, engage in spending some time in worship together. Read a passage of scripture uh, in the evenings, if you've got the time, uh, talk about it, be intentional there, and uh, consider that your family in this season of life, and invest in that way. Thank you. What, a, what an encouraging word that God gives us the church, and uh, no matter the season of life, we've, we've got family around us. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, um, this one is a little bit easier, but I do want to speak to it. What about empty nesters? What would you say to empty nesters? I think, you know, the, the, certainly the commands of scripture to teach your children uh, don't apply when you've got no children in the house. But at the same time, husbands are called by God in Ephesians chapter five to wash their wives in the water of the word. And so uh, if you, if it's something you've done with your children, it's easy to continue. If it's not, um, I do think it is crucial that husbands engage and lead out in talking with their wives about God's word and reading it together and spending time praying together. And so, again, this is an opportunity to take your personal devotions and say, this is what I've been reading about. What do you think about this? This is what I've been praying about. What are the things that you've been praying about? How can we pray together? How can we pray for one another? Um, so I do think uh, you know, you want, you want to see your marriage grow uh, when your kids leave. Sadly, uh, we live in a world where divorce is most common when kids leave the house, um, and even in Christian families. And I think a lot of the reason for that is because of a lack of engagement, not just personally, but also spiritually between a husband and a wife. And, uh, and so we want to see husbands leading out in uh, leading their home spiritually, whether the kids are there or not. Thank you. Yeah, um, it, it is it's sometimes shocking when you find out how much of someone's relationship was tied to taking care of kids. And yeah, riding that way. 
Um, what would be a good goal for a family to shoot for in family worship? So Sorry, start yes. small. I mean, depending on the age of your kids, you know, when Nate was, was three, it was about five minutes uh, to 10 minutes on, we would, we actually, we didn't sit them on the couch. We would, we would all get in our bed um, and sit and open up uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible and read a few pages from the Jesus Storybook Bible. We would pray a very short prayer and then we would sing um, this song called the Gospel Song. It's this short little song, and it just became our bedtime song for Nate. That took all of you know eight minutes, ten minutes. Um, and as time has gone on, and our kids have gotten older, it it ranges from usually anywhere from fifteen to twenty minutes uh, to to bring in all the elements of of reading and praying and, and singing and trying to have a discussion, a, a short discussion, about what's there. And uh, I would just say in that, you know, it may sound intimidating to some to think of having, you know, a 10 to 15 minute discussion about a passage of the Bible um, with your, your family. And uh, if that intimidates you, I would just encourage you in the, the truth that if you, you know the Lord and you love the Lord, you're going to have things to talk about when you talk about his word. And so don't fear those conversations, but in, embrace them and recognize that God's going to give you wisdom and grace uh, as a parent to engage with your kids in those conversations. But yeah, so, so really start, start simple. Um, those three elements are the things that I think of. Um, this is uh, Don Whitney, Don, eh, Donald Whitney um, wrote a little book called Family Worship. Uh, easy read. He was one of my professors in seminary. And, uh, and he would just say it over and over again, read, pray, sing, read, pray, sing, and, uh, and just do those things simply. And, uh, and if at first, you know, your conversation about the, the scripture is really short, you ask your kids questions and they don't really have answers, that's okay. Um, just use the time and, and, and recognize that as you continue to do it, they're going to grow in their understanding. They're going to respond more and those conversations are going to grow. Okay. And inevitably there are people I think that have been listening to this that are connecting the dots and thinking they have not done a good job washing their wife and the word of God, or they've not done a good job training their children um, or even looking back on their lives and their children are grown and they're dealing with some guilt uh, of how that happened. Do you have any words for uh, people dealing with guilt in this area? I think the thing to remember is that God's mercies are new every single morning. Today is a new day. Um, I, I love, there's a song that I've been listening to these last few weeks that, uh, that the, this, the, the singer says, you know, don't dwell on the past unless it's Golgotha. You know, think back on the cross and the fact that Christ has forgiven all your sins and start afresh today. And so that's what I would encourage you to do is to, to not think about the past, but just say, you know, bring your family together and say, hey, guys, this is something that I've not let out in well, and it's an area I want to grow. I want our family to know the Lord and to love him and to serve him. And this is a way that we can grow in our knowledge of him and our love for him. And so we want to start uh, opening God's word together and, uh, and using some of the time that we have, this extra time that we have in this season, uh, to, to build a pattern of worshiping God together as a family. So you think if my people went before Jesus and told them that they were feeling guilty, uh, he would still love them? Uh, amen. Absolutely. <laughs> there is grace for not doing family worship. Um, and so, and again, I think um, just to, to, to reiterate what I said earlier, you know, the, the scripture commands that we teach our children diligently, um, that can look different. And so there may be people in your congregation who are teaching their children diligently God's word um, and not doing family worship. And that is okay. Um, the command is to teach them diligently. And so that's the thing that we want to do. And this is just one tool in the tool belt, if you will, for doing that um, in a way that I think is particularly helpful. Thanks so much. Is there uh, just anything else that, that I forgot to ask or you feel like we need to know along these lines? I think the only other thing that I would say is be flexible. Um, you know, the, the, the only way you're going to keep this pattern of family worship and develop a habit of it is to be flexible. 
and so you know we we don't do it every single night we don't do it on church nights uh because we get home too late uh we often you know have friday night family movie night and we don't do it on family movie night um so we just we're we're flexible um and and being flexible has allowed us to continue doing it for uh, the last you know eight years and that's been that's been in, in so many ways the key. And so even, even in that flexibility, being willing to say, okay, we're, we're not going to have time to have a long discussion, but let's read a Psalm together tonight and pray, or let's just pray as a family and head to bed. Um, those kinds of things, just keeping it up, even in small ways and small doses is going to help with the consistency over time. So I think that's the, the only other thing that I would add. Yeah. It sounds like eight years is going to be way better than six straight weeks of seven days a yeah, week. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's like, it's like anything else, you know, if, if you're not flexible, then eventually you're going to crash and burn. Um, it happens with Bible reading, right? All of us start in January with these amazing Bible reading plans where we're reading four chapters a day and then we get behind and then we crash and burn. And, uh, and so I think just having that flexibility built in, that's why I love Bible reading plans that have like makeup days built into them um, because you got the flexibility. And it really helps. And I think that's the same thing with, with family worship. You know, if you miss a day, that's okay. Uh, just start again the, the next day and, uh, and keep pressing on. Gotcha. Thank you so much, Dustin. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, so glad to be able to talk to you and, uh, and to encourage your congregation uh, to pursue the Lord as, as families. Uh, it's a gift. And uh, and something that, that I know I treasure, and I hope that, that they'll grow to treasure as well. Yeah. We look forward to having you down here in person sometime soon. Yeah, I look forward to it as well. All right, thank you. Yep. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dustin. I can tell you Dustin and Jamie's lives back up what they've talked about. Their ministry of the word expands from the church, and their home, coffee shops, uh, many different places. They are often ministering the word to others in addition to their children. If you still don't feel like you're connected to a situation like that, or that's not terribly relevant for you, I'd love to invite you to join in virtually with my family. Uh, you could call, you could FaceTime, we could arrange something so that you could be a part of our family worship from time to time and just uh, enjoy singing a song with little ones. We sing a lot of deep and wide in my house, um, looking at the word and praying together. Again, I'd love to invite you to my family. The other pastors extend the same invitation, and there are others in this church who would love to have you join in, particularly in this season where we are so disconnected. So I hope you'll take me up on that and call or email or text me, and, and we will arrange that. A few announcements for us before we close out the night. One, Cindy will be sending out an email in the coming days about a pictorial directory. We were hoping to take pictures here but I really don't want to be without pictures any longer. As I pray through the directory, I want to be able to see you and I want our people to have access as well. So what we're going to ask is that you uh, grab a picture, uh, hopefully a digital picture you may have, and email that back into the church. We may use some older pictures if we need to, but if you have a current picture of your household and uh, could send that back in, we would surely appreciate that. And we'll plug that in and we can print out hard copies as well as digital copies of the directory from those pictures. Uh, one need we have in the church is we have a handful of folks who aren't getting this content on YouTube and would love to have DVDs and CDs of the Sunday service. So if you'd be willing to deliver on the weekends, uh, Saturday evening, Sunday morning, if you'd be willing to go deliver those to a few houses, you don't go in, be a little bit of training on how to handle the, the devices so that we're not spreading any germs. But if you'd be willing to do that, I think it'd be a neat ministry for an individual or for a family just to go bless some of these folks who are shut in and without internet, uh, let me know, uh, preferably, preferably via email, uh, but text or phone call is fine too. Uh, we are coming out with business meeting information in the coming couple of weeks. Obviously we will not be having business meeting as usual, but we will still be getting some of this information in front of you members and just want you to know that we are thinking about that and uh, you'll see more on that in the days ahead. Finally, a number of you have uh, asked about or heard discussion of drive-in church, and we are still working to make that happen. Uh, hopefully there is in the mail some 
uh, a device that we can use to transmit the sound over local radio into your vehicle so we could all drive up, windows wouldn't even have to come down, and we could worship in the parking lot and the sound would come right into your car. But uh, we don't have a firm date on that because we've got to get the equipment here, get it tested, and then we will let you know as soon as we can make that happen. Everybody would love to be back together. So, With that, let me pray for us. I'm going to kind of hit some high points, again, fairly general on the prayer list, uh, given that this is a public video. And then I'm going to ask you, wherever you're at, to just spend some time praying through this prayer list and lifting up these brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Father, we once again give you praise because once again you've proven faithful. Lord, you caused the, the sun to rise this morning in the setting of the same. Lord, you have made a way for sinners to be at peace with you. you. Lord, you've given your spirit so that we have a seal of your promise that you will come back for us and so that we are empowered to live according to your will. Lord, we give you praise for the good things going on in our church. We give you praise for your provision for us during this season. Lord, we give you praise that Mr. Barry Larson is coming home today. Even as this video is watched, he should be home. And Lord, we thank you for what a tremendous recovery that's been and pray that you would continue to be with them as they transition to this new season. Uh, that you would give Miss Linda strength to uh, continue to serve him so faithfully. Lord, we have a lot of needs. Lord, we see here people we're connected to with the virus, and we pray for them, others who are just ongoing battling health issues in need of recovery. Lord, we pray that um, you would strengthen these feeble bodies, that you would give doctors wisdom, that you would give uh, family members patient endurance to continue uh, coming alongside these loved ones. Lord, we pray for so many with Alzheimer's and other uh, debilitating problems during the season, so many cut off from family and not understanding. Lord, we pray for your grace. We pray that, um, that you would be near to the brokenhearted, both those who are separated and those of us on the outside who can't get to our loved ones. Won't you be near? Lord, we pray for those with heart conditions. Uh, and we pray for those who are caring for loved ones, even in hospice care in this, in this season. Lord, we need your mercy now as ever. Lord, we need you to intervene in our hearts. We need you to intervene, intervene uh, in our minds that we would have good attitudes, and that we would persevere serving and loving on and praying for these loved ones in this season. Lord, we continue to lift up our leaders and our medical staff and so many, Lord, with so much on their plate and so much at stake. Lord, we continue to ask that you would have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Uh, this is not a state or country thing. This is worldwide. Lord, we know the consequences of sin is death, and we're seeing that afresh. And yet, Lord, we know that you are a merciful God. And so we continually want to come before your throne and ask for mercy. Ask that you would stop this disease, that you would stop this, this thing that is destroying life, that you would bring healing. Pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you guys have a great evening.